Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. We have our rights and we have our freedom and we have our abilities in this nation to do whatever needs to be done. Well, the Germans were up on the cliff and we were getting shot at down there and, and uh, we were being bombarded and all of a sudden my leg felt funny and I looked around and it was missing. So that was the end of my days in the front lines. Because I laid there five, six hours before I got picked up. And we for the bombardment to stop so the medics could get in and get us out of there. Never forget that the pride my mother had of placing in the window a four-star uh, picture of having th all four sons in the service, you know, three in the Navy, one in the Army, and that went on for the length of the war. And but she got them all back. We were flying at about 12,000 feet. And it was over Kyushu. And uh, of course, Nagasaki is located on the north end of, of that island. And uh, uh, they were shooting an anti-aircraft uh, shells at us and they were exploding at about our altitude. We saw the cloud from the explosion of the atomic bomb and it was a, a white colored cloud and it uh, was very high, probably it was as high as 40,000 feet on the top. We weren't briefed that there was going to be an atomic bomb drop so we didn't know what it was but it was very obvious that it was some kind of an atomic explosion because it was a clear day, as I recall. There were no other clouds in the sky. Living in the neighborhood during the 40s, there were so many of the neighbors' sons that were in the service. They had blue flag, blue stars hanging from almost every window. Periodically, you would have the Western Union boy riding a bicycle in his uniform hat on, and he would come down the street and people would be sitting on their front porches and wondering at which home he was going to stop at. When I landed, I was shocked by the sight of the wounded, arms missing, legs missing, people on gurneys waiting to get on the ships that we came over on. It was awesome. I, I can't believe it. And I won't never forget it. I had things other that, that I wouldn't forget, but that was the most uh, devastating sight I ever saw. I never forget my army buddies. At the time, I was closer to them than I was to my family. I mean, it was a war. And I adored, I adored President Roosevelt and his strength and his ideas. And I, I don't want to get into the political end of it because, you know, that's always a, an argument. But uh, what he did for me, I, I will never forget him as a true president. He left a legacy. I'll never forget World War II for one main reason. I met my wife when I was stationed in Arkansas, and she was working for the Air Force Base in Arkansas. Probably the greatest thing that ever happened to me was meeting her. So she was having trouble with one shoot one time, and I, I had noticed her before. You know, and uh, she said, "Would you mind helping me close this parachute?" <laughs> and well, that was, and I said, "Yeah." <laughs> So that was wonderful, I, you know, yeah, I couldn't believe it because she was a nice looking lady, you know. So we just got, we just got going. And, and when we got to Pearl Harbor, we got off of the ship there and uh, they took us down to Oahu. And we went from Oahu over to Pearl Harbor and we had to clean up the streets and uh, the buildings and stuff like that. We hauled a lot of that stuff 
and dumped it into the ocean because there was nothing but debris and stuff. And uh, there was bodies laying all over. There was arms, legs, and all that laying around. And uh, we had to pick that stuff up and put them in boxes and stuff, like a, like a wooden box. And they had it all, all numbered and stuff like that. And I think they, what they did, after we put it in the box, they got them filled up. They sealed the box and they shipped it back to the United States. Because we, we picked up, we had to pick up everything that was laying around, no matter what it was. Then we had to wash the streets down because the streets was bloody as in heck. And uh, I mean, there were little kids and everybody, you know, just, they were just blowed apart. It, it, it was terrible. Because when I got home from uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, I used to get up in the middle of the night and I'd cry my eyes out and scream. It took me six months before I could settle down and actually be myself again because it was so gruesome and bloody. That's why I never, never talked about it. This is the first time I really, really spilled it all out because I, 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 I don't want to relive it again because once is enough. If anybody ever seen it, they thank God that they're American in their home. never forget that those who served in World War II did so voluntarily without question. This is the prayer that Patton had his chaplain write asking for better weather during the Battle of Abolish. Almighty God and most merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee of great goodness to restrain these immoderate rains which we have had to contend. Grant us fair weather for battle. Graciously hearken to us as soldiers who call upon thee that armed with thy power we may advance from victory to victory and crush the opposition and wickedness of our enemies and establish thy justice among men and nations. Amen.